John Baptist de La Salle was attentive to his situation, and in response to the call of Christ, he devoted his life to the organization of schools accessible to all, especially the sons of artisans and the poor of his day. Paradoxically, he was persecuted and condemned for defending the right of everyone to attend school. Throughout his work, he opened up a new perspective in the understanding of childhood and of the dignity of the teaching vocation and the important role of schools in the construction of society. The Brothers of the Christian Schools continued his legacy in France before and after the Revolution. During the 19th century in particular, they developed their educational activity and they periodically revised the manual for schools entitled The Conduct of Christian Schools, which went through 22 editions up to 1916. Throughout the 19th century, education was a central topic of political debate. This was especially the case in France, where the development of socialism, liberalism, and democracy meant that politicians were creating an iron opposition to the Christian school. By a series of laws, they contrived to exclude religious men and women from acting as teachers in state schools, which were free and obligatory. As a result, the brothers who had been defenders of gratuity and universal access to education found themselves obliged to create schools that were privately financed. This did not restrict the creativity of their approach to schools, and they moved into all areas of education, including work in higher education. Their publications were a model for the world of education. The start of the 20th century was a time of great change in the Institute. The brothers were expelled from France by the secularization laws, and time came to strengthen the presence of the Institute in the five continents. Consequently, the brothers were in demand from all quarters because of the quality of their provision of Christian education. This was often endorsed by their participation in the Universal Exhibitions, such as the one in Paris in 1900. It is not possible to understand the story of the brothers of the Christian schools without linking it closely to the great world events of the 20th century. The brothers suffered persecution and death in the great wars and revolutions which raged during the first half of the century, especially in Europe. After the Second World War in 1945, the brothers began to realize that the world had changed and that both religious life and their own raison d'etre as Christian educators needed to adapt to the new times. Consequently, the 1950s and 1960s were times of bubbling creativity aimed at producing a new Lasallian Institute. Inspired by new thinking in the church in the area of pastoral theology and by developments in technology and science which led to a dialogue between the church and the modern world as seen in the Second Vatican Council, the brothers decided to renovate their foundational documents, and they transformed the rule which they had inherited from their founder and the first brothers. By the end of the 20th century, the Institute already had a new look, and it had experienced the intensity of renewal in the Catholic Church. The brothers today are sharing their educational charism with thousands of men and women who are totally dedicated to education and have encountered through St. John Baptiste de La Salle a new way of being church by educating children, young people and adults to be citizens committed to justice and peace throughout the world. The Salian education today is still a powerful instrument of human development and it is capable of developing bonds of fraternity wherever it is found. John Baptist de La Salle never dreamt that his small commitment to a community of teachers would be transforming the lives of more than a million students in more than 80 countries in the year in which we commemorate the tercentenary of his going to the House of the Father. <laughs>